everybody, Daniel from Space Doc here. Now Space Doc's been running for almost three years now and we've covered some important topics. We've talked about artificial gravity and realistic spaceflight propulsion, design principles and fictional combat tactics, but I think really we've circled around the central issue of the science fiction genre. The one most important consideration in the entire field of spacecraft design. And that is, where's the toilet? Toilets are, for I should think fairly self-evident reasons, very important things to have on a spacecraft. And yet, all across science fiction, even in instances where they allow us to fully explore the spacecraft, to confirm to our own satisfaction that there is indeed no toilet, sci-fi writers and designers continue to fail to include them in their ships. For the first example, here is the Normandy SR-1 from Mass Effect, a ship that we can search every inch of in our playthroughs of the game, and wherein we will find no toilet facilities of any kind. Maybe this is a side effect of the ship's stealth systems, and the ejection of any waste would cause the ship to be detected by hostile warships. But one thing's for certain, this ship is described as being chartered for months-long missions. If the lack of toilet facilities on the First Normandy are indeed connected to the stealth systems, then we must congratulate Cerberus on their innovative design of a stealth toilet for the Normandy SR2, which is apparently capable of disposing as much waste as necessary without alerting the enemy to the Normandy's location. It would seem that Bioware takes a rather worrying pleasure in depriving their characters of basic toilet facilities, as we see the Ebon Hawk from Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2 is also entirely lacking in any form of bathroom, despite also being involved in numerous long journeys with no visits to port. But fret not, after the Dynamic Class freighter became the success it was famed to be, the Corellian Engineering Corporation got their heads together and spent 4,500 years trying to come up with a better design. And after all that time, they finally solved the toilet problem by adding a toilet to the YT-1300 freighter. Unfortunately, it's in the kitchen. But it does, as I understand it, fold away a bit. It is perhaps not the best site for any kind of personal privacy or hygiene, but it could be argued that it is better than donning a spacesuit to do the business outside. Such an attempt at an extravehicular defecation, or EVD if you will, would bear a serious risk of a somewhat embarrassing explosive decompression, and may even demand the design of some kind of special spacesuit that would likely prove far more expensive in research and development than simply installing a toilet on the spacecraft in the first place. As we move back into Bioware's bizarre aversion to basic human decency, we find that none of the ships in Star Wars The Old Republic are fitted with toilets of any kind, despite all being designed for long-term missions. One of them, the Thunderclap, please bear in mind that Thunderclap is the name of this ship, and I stopped talking about the whole decompression thing a few seconds ago. But regardless, this ship is meant to carry dozens of marines for months on end. Now, I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like much fun. Strangely enough, the Galactic Empire felt the need to include a toilet, or as it's called in Star Wars, a refresher on the Sentinel-class landing craft. So apparently if a stormtrooper needs to use the toilet in the two-minute break between dropping out of a Star Destroyer and being deployed into a battlefield, that's fine. But if anybody wants to use the toilet on the X-70B Phantom during a seven-month reconnaissance operation, they are quite literally shit out of luck. This is Daniel from Space Doc, signing off. Here's one from Molly McCook. When you flush the toilet, where does it go? That sounds like an engineering question. Thank you for watching Space Doc. Please remember to like, subscribe and share for more science fiction spacecraft summaries. If you enjoy the channel, why not consider pledging your support on Patreon? For just $1 a month, you'll be able to access the Space Doc schedule to see what's coming up.